Hey everybody, this is Patrick, the Austin Books web guy, and I'm here because 2017 is the 40th anniversary of Austin Books and Comics. So starting this week, we're going to be doing a special web series where we get to meet all of our fabulous employees here and just kind of just talk to them, see what they love about the store, what, what they feel makes Austin Books special. Um, so, so join us. We'll be doing this over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm uh, one of the managers here. Yeah. How long have you been here? Uh, I'm going to say off and on probably five, six years. Something like that. I'll lose track. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what, what all do you do around here? Like, what's your, your thing? Oh, man. I uh, do merchandise. I do back issues. I take care of statues. I, I'm kind of like jack of all trades. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so My name is Brandon Zern. I've been here since... Ooh, April of 2004, so uh, 13 years. Nice. Lucky 13. <laughs> uh, in addition to having managed these stores and, you know, kind of created Outlaw Moon and Guzu Gallery and, uh, you know, that kind of thing, my main thing, my favorite thing to do here is to grade comics, buy collections, uh, including comics, vintage toys, vintage game stuff, you know, crazy old things. Yeah, yeah, one of the first things you'll see when you walk in is our, is our big showcase wall, and there's tons of just amazing classic, classic even some, some, some modern classic stuff on there, so he's, Brandon's the one who takes care of all that. I try to keep it pretty diverse, you mm -hmm. know, something, uh, something for everyone who's interested in collectible comics. Yeah. Yeah, Hi, I am Brennan Cowart, employee here at Austin Books and Comics. Cool. And Mostly comics. <laughs> Mostly comics. How long have you worked here? Um, well, in August, this will be, God, four years. Wow. It's been a little while. Yeah. It traps you, this place. But it's so great. It's so great. You become a, it's, a lot of places like to throw around, oh, we're the family, the such and such family. It, it really is here. It, you really yeah. do feel like you're part of, you know. For just sure. this kind of close-knit group of people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what's so what's your your favorite thing about the store? Uh, it's a fun place to be at. It's like you know, growing up, I always wanted to work in a comic book store, and then uh, I married a really nice lady who makes a lot more money than I do, and she said, "Hey, you can go work at a comic book store." So I did. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Besides everything, my favorite thing to sell is a classic comic. You know, people yeah. will often ask me about uh, what they should get to have Stan Lee sign, right, or Neil Adams sign if they go into a convention, or they're about to get married and they need a perfect wedding present or they uh, you know someone's having a birthday and they collected old western comics so I can help them find something really cool and that feels pretty good because I help them find not only a classic comic but one that has like a special meaning maybe something they had as a kid or uh, you know a comic from the, the month that their their father was born sure, that yeah. kind of thing so that feels pretty good yeah, yeah, definitely. Like it is, it is always really cool whenever you help somebody find something and that they're really excited about it. Oh yeah, seeing them like super pleased with their purchase and just they know that they got the perfect gift. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the product. It, I mean, it's got to be. Uh, you know, I get to talk about this comics product that I love, and uh, you know, with people who also love it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, it's not like trying to sell a car or a mattress if you're not into cars or mattresses, because uh, you know, unless you really have a passion for those things. Um, but it's like I, you know, I love comics and getting to actively talk about comics and sell comics to people who are also actively really interested, or, or just looking to get into it for the first time. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of, it's pretty fulfilling. For sure, yeah. Did you 
been here for about five years, so what's your favorite memory of the store? Um, this is going to sound hokey, but being hired, because I was working a really horrible job, and I lucked in on an interview, and uh, I'm not going to say nailed it, but kind of nailed it, and then I started, you know, two days later, and i uh, been having a blast ever since. Nice. Yeah, cool. Uh, of the store itself, um, man, there's a lot. I mean, it's mostly, like, when we do signings, we get to meet, like, a lot of really cool people. Like, almost everybody I've ever met in the comics industry has been nothing but nice. And you never really expect that from famous people, you know? You always yeah. expect them to, you know, kind of be like, oh, oh, oh. But most of them are, like, really cool, down-to-earth people. So pretty much every person we met in a signing, uh, doing big projects, and when they're finished, that's one of my favorite memories. That's a, that's for sure, yeah. yeah. Like, there's no, no satisfaction like a big finished project, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 13 years, that's a... That's a oh, so oh. many memories. Yeah, there's so a lot of memories. A lot of cool stuff. Um, I mean, getting to show... I'm name-dropping, but... Meeting Michael Sarah and uh, Jonah Hill at the same time, mm -hmm. and being the guy to put Scott Pilgrim in Sarah's hand, bef like six months before he was announced. Oh, wow. Um, that was pretty rad. Um, you know, multiple... Meetings, you know, Robert Rodriguez, mm -hmm. uh, Guillermo del Toro. Yep. Um, I mean, just meeting really cool people that I never thought I'd have any chance of meeting before. Uh, Martin Starr, long before he was Guilfoyle. <laughs> Although he started to look like Guilfoyle, so I didn't recognize him yeah. right away. It was, uh, it was really cool, you know, just getting to help people that are like, oh my gosh, you're amazing, you're such a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, and it's especially cool when you do meet them and like, like, like you said, when like they're just really nice yeah. and just really easygoing. Really neat people. <laughs> And uh, free comic book day is always, like, just such a great time. I mean, it takes a lot of work to get there, but it's, like, when it's going perfect, it's awesome all the time. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. My favorite ongoing event is uh, we do, at Outlaw Moon, we do Dungeons & Dragons and Magic Nights, and I'm very involved with those, and I always have fun with that. Mm -hmm. uh, meeting new players, getting them to enjoy the game as much as I do. Um, classic events my two favorite of all time were the original fables remembrance day party uh where we had when we decorated the place with we hung up like branches in the back oh, issue yeah. room mm -hmm. i spent half of a day hanging these little plastic fairies at different lengths with fishing line yeah i remember that that was really cool and, uh, bill willingham was here matt sturgis was here i mean we had like just like a fables royalty like signing table we had probably the most cosplay I've seen eh, we got a, well the other event had a lot of cosplay too but uh, even I showed up dressed as Bigby Wolf mm -hmm. so and I never cosplay so <laughs> that was a blast cool uh, the other big one was the Scott Pilgrim midnight party oh yeah for volume six mm -hmm. where we had like a rock star party the video game because that doesn't mean what it did back then right uh, we had uh, a costume contest and there's awesome contest. One of the employees came up with this great yes word balloon. How cool. Um, for like a photo op kind of thing. And this place was just packed with people. They were really excited about that last volume of Scott Pilgrim. They were ringing people up at midnight and they're telling me oh, I'm going to read it all when I get home. Like, oh my god, I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah, no, that was, I remember that was a big deal when it came out because that was, like didn't the, volume six came out like around the time that the movie did, didn't it? I think. I think it was like shortly before. Yeah. Because we didn't really know how it was going to end. Right. And so I was pretty curious about, uh, you know, when the movie came out and, and like it started to veer sort of differently. I was like, mm -hmm. ah, ooh, what, what, what's going to happen here? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, yeah, in fact, I know it's before that because I sold Brandon Roth a copy of Volume 6 at the premiere. That's awesome. Of Scott <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, that was with, fun. With his, with, with his evil vegan powers? Yeah, I, I uh, uh, his his uh, handler or whatever showed up and said like Mr. Ralph would like to know if he would uh, if he could buy a copy of Volume Six from you. I said, well, if Mr. Ralph would be uh, able to come out and take a picture with me, <laughs> absolutely, I'll give him one. Uh, nice. He was super cool. He was super nice. And and meeting him is like, you are Superman. Yeah. Wow, you really fit the bill. That, that's awesome. Oh, cool. it's got to be the Labor Day sale. Yeah. Always, I look forward to that uh, so often because my you know my preference. I love. Um, 
graphic novel collections. I love hardback editions, and so many times we've done deals like buy two get one free, buy three get one free on on hardbacks and graphic novels and stuff like that, like at our Sidekick store. Uh, and so when we've got a when I've got a nice stack of things that I'm looking at over there, it's nice to 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 get you know. The, those those few free and it's and it's always just that that rush you know when you've got a lot of people in here hunting for things thereafter uh, just running around it's a it's a lot of fun cool yeah like is that I, I know you've you've always been su especially super into the, the big Marvel omnibus editions yeah just yeah the the big because I mean why why not you know it's especially for series that are out of print or or printed over a series of smaller things that are hard to put together and find an omnibus just gives you all of that one place in order. Uh, and those things uh, retain a decent amount of value after they've gone out of print, and they don't print very many, uh, depending on which one you buy. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Cool. Uh I mean, I'm really happy that the store is hitting 40 years. I mean, that's one of the longest running comic shops in the country. Yeah. Uh, we're still going strong. We have a lot of really cool stuff coming up for that as well, which I'm very happy about. So, yeah, I mean, I hope everybody has as much of a good time as I do in this shop. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Patrick. <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, I highly, highly recommend one of my favorite uh, uh, comic series that I recently... Um, got acquainted with was the uh, Abnett and Lanning uh, Annihilation slash Guardians of the Galaxy space epic opera that they did in the uh, in the 2000s that kind of mm -hmm. gave rise to the to what we think of now as the Guardians of the Galaxy everything you see all the characters you see in the movie or at least that that main cast of people were were put together in a team by Abnett and Lanning in Annihilation Conquest um, first and it's it's just real cool I'm a big fan of, of just giant epic storylines that take place over a long period of time and you just see the development of so many characters uh, so that's I mean and it's and it really does that it expands a long time and you see so much happen you get to see old Drax become current Drax because if you hold pictures of them up together they don't look the same yeah 70s Drax was like, like, like did he have like a big cape or something it was a big old cape and like a you know, like a cowl thing and yeah he, he was and he was kind of like a uh, he was kind of like he had Hulk uh, intelligence so he's yeah. kind of like a space Hulk essentially but they turned him into uh, a, a fierce warrior uh, in, in Annihilation, and then you get to see you get to see cool stuff. You get to see Star Lord meet Rocket and Groot for the first mm -hmm. time. You get to see uh, them work closely with Nova, and and you get to see them and Gamora uh, develop a relationship. It's really interesting stuff, and it's like one of the most Thanos heavy stories. If you're into Thanos, you yeah. cannot recommend it enough. It's so awesome. Yeah, and it's a, um, like you said too, how how it influenced the movies. I mean, I, I remember in. The, the credits of the first Guardians of the Galaxy, it says, based on Guardians of the Galaxy by Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. So, yeah. And yeah, that's a, another one I definitely highly recommend. And if you if you see the post-credits to the second Guardians movie, you can tell they're still taking stuff from Abnett and Lanning's stuff. They're still, uh, they're still building towards various things that Abnett and Lanning definitely set up in their epic, epic run. Awesome. If yeah. If you're fortunate enough to find it, I highly recommend it. Cool. All right, well, thank you very much. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for talking to me. Good to see y'all. Yeah. Um, man, 40 years, Austin Books. Good job. You've been uh, keeping Central Texas entertained for that long. That's pretty good. And not just Central Central Texas. I bring up people from all over the world. That's oh, yeah. pretty crazy. And, uh, you know, this is this is the shop that when I first came in here in the year, I think it was the year 2000 I first stopped in, I thought, well, I never need to go anywhere else. This is everything I've ever wanted and could imagine and beyond. So. For sure, and it's, it's only gotten bigger and better. Yeah, this one is half as big, so yeah. there yeah, you go. Right. Awesome. Well, Brandon, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.